Happy New Year to everybody. So uh, it's it's finally Big Ten time uh, again. So now we go into uh, the familiarity of the Big Ten, the talent in the Big Ten, the the coaches in the Big Ten. We 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 really have challenges ahead of us. It's an amazing accomplishment, 13 and 0. Not a lot of it. There's only four teams left that are undefeated in the country, and uh, you know that's amazing, amazing for the school, amazing for us, and we don't get caught up in it at all. The guys are just so focused on getting better every day and uh, trying to get as prepared as possible for the next team. Um, that we're really just blocking out the outside noise or the records or uh, anything like that. We play both strong and smart. That's who we are. Both strong, tough kids, and smart as hell when we go out and play. We don't be ourselves. We'll wear them out with our persistence in playing with fast legs. Fast legs doesn't mean you're playing, you know, terrorless. It means fast legs. You're moving them, right? And then we'll play smart. Yeah, we're playing fast. But we're not going to make 50-50 plays. We're going to knock down 50-50 shots. And we believe in ourselves and our team. Everything that we do. Miss a shot, I know I'm making the next. Make a shot, I know I'm making the next. Shooters shoot to get hot. And they shoot to stay hot. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what you have to do. You have to have that mentality. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. This one, but all that said, this one win the game. Written determination. Right. Who's the most determined? Those dudes are angry, man. They're coming at you with everything that they got. But we're going to have more grit, more determination, right? We will get the 50 50 balls. We didn't get them the other night. We didn't get them. We went. Watch it. Uh, I'll go back to it. We're going to take the charge. We're going to have the jump balls. We're going to deflect. That's key for us today. All right, but smart, we're playing together. All that stuff doesn't mean that if we don't play together. Hit the next, uh, the, the extra man. Trust the plan. Trust the plan that it's going to work. We'll embrace this challenge too. You got 16 of them. 16 challenges coming up. 16 league games. Everyone is going to be a great experience for you just to go through what it's like to play at this level in front of sellout crowd. Embrace every minute of it. Play like winners and with one heartbeat. One single team, one heartbeat. The second-ranked Wolverines jump back into conference play with a Chrysler center jump against 7-6 Penn State. Pool, a jab step a couple of times. A shoulder shake, a step-back three on the way. Money. Pool trying to lose Reeves. A crossover, now a middle lane drive. Behind the back pass, oh, and a man. jam for Davis. That was special. Put that highlight reel together for Jordan Poole. Simpson around the screen from Davis. Takes it all the way to the rack and lays it in. Yeah, I bought down a little school yard here. Little hesitation, stop and go. Now to Stevens, pulling his way inside, off the small square and good. And just like that, Penn State has cut the 10-point lead to two. Bolton hesitates, now drives. A hook pass intercepted by Brasdakis. Quickly shoveling it up ahead for Poole. Poole, a pull-up leaner off the glass, good. Bryce Dake with the bounce pass, finds Teske, left wing, Matthews drives baseline, aggressive move, and over the front of the rim, roll through. Bolton, a deep three, off the heel, rebound Bryce Dacus. He'll push it right to left. He'll take it coast to coast, he'll lay it up. It'll come up short, Matthews is there for the ticket. Just good, relentless basketball by the Wolverines. I mean, when you've got multiple push guys out there, fill that lane. And Charles Matthews did a good job at it. Remember, no Isaiah Livers at Michigan's disposal. Teske jams it down, right baseline. Another nice feed from Xavier Simpson. Brasdakis will drive, spin baseline, lean. Mm. Yes, and he's fouled. Number 13 is flexing. He's got the double-double. Penetrates right side of the alley, knocked away by Matthews. Matthews in Michigan right to left. Up the right sideline for Poole, right back to Matthews. Scoops off the glass and through. Pretty dish for Poole. An even better finish for Charles Matthews. Holds it on his right hip. Wears 24 in blue. Backs his way in the paint. Hook shot on the way. Just can't stop him. How about Poole with an answer from 16 at the left elbow. Drives baseline. Spins back toward the paint. Now pumps up and under. Schooled the young Miles Dredd. Brasdakis, catch and shoot three. That's big. In this Brasdakis, Michigan stays unbeaten. 14-0 thanks to a 13-point knockout of the Nittany Lions.
How many guys like scoring 24 points at half? And that's what we had the first half, 24 points. We had eight turnovers, and we took bad shots. We wasted, we scored 24. Second half, we had two turnovers, we scored 43. Twice as many points, almost twice as many. That's how you win. You take care of it, you take good shots, right? That's how you win games. Big 10, just win a game, right? Just win a game, rest, and go out and get ready to get another one. It was gritty, came all the way down to the wire, uh, played against a really physical, uh, good aggressive defensive team uh, who were athletic and they were able to get out of transition. Um, so it definitely was a, a Big Ten win. They're a real scrappy team. They came out there hungry and, uh, you know, we proved that we were even more hungry than them. And we brought to them in the second half and that really kind of startled them. They weren't ready for our pressure, for our intensity, and that's why we won. When we come back, John Beeline joins us to talk about his team's push back into Big Ten play. Michigan participates in its eighth outdoor hockey game. Is it still special? They're playing the Fighting Irish at Notre Dame Stadium. You better believe it is. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Gardner White. You'll overpay anywhere else. Our Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the Week is freshman Ignis Brasdakis. Last week, he garnered his third Big Ten Freshman of the Week honors after he pumped in 21 points and was perfect from three on three attempts against Binghamton. He followed that up with his first career double-double, scoring 16 points, grabbing 11 rebounds in Michigan's win over Penn State. It feels really good uh, getting my first double-double of my career, but... It even feels better that we got the uh, third Big Ten win. Was it difficult to get back in this groove because it's Big Ten and they know you so well and vice versa? Yeah, they were real tough out there. Um, they knew they knew some of our plays and stuff, but we we grinded it out. We were the more gritty team. We were tougher. We were going for loose balls, and I feel like that's what got us the win. Do you like that DNA about this team, the fact that it, it is maybe a little bit more physical, a little bit more scrappy than some of the Michigan teams in the past? I love that. That's the kind of game that I play. You know, I'm as physical as it gets. I pride myself on being, you know, one of the strongest on the court, and our team's super physical, and we're all ready for that kind of pressure and that kind of physical contact. You dive back into Big Ten play with a team that's more defensive-minded, maybe than, than anybody else in this conference. How much of a test was it for your club, and what did your team prove to you? Well, you know, we, we, I felt, Matt, that we were in a funk because we hadn't played against a man-to-man -man in two games, but more importantly, three weeks. We had not played against man-to-man, -man, and you can't simulate when Josh Reese is guarding you, right? So it was really important that we just get in and get through it and get a win and make just enough shots to win the game. So I'm just... Uh, I'm really pleased with this win over Penn State. I think they got a really good team. You know, they've beaten Virginia Tech at home, right? Maryland and Indiana could have won either way. They're 0-3, and to get a win, to get a double-digit win on them was big for us. Yeah, they make a couple more free throws, and yeah. they beat the Hoosiers. They're a team that limited you to 25 points in the first half, but you end up with 65. What was the difference from the first half to the second half offensively? We didn't turn it over, Matt. We didn't turn it over. We had two, eight turnovers in the first half. You know, they got out and got in the passing lanes again a little bit. We had a... Uh, a couple crazy plays that we can't make. And sometimes a bad shot is a bad turnover. So we're, we're just really uh, learning to how to play with a different characters in games like this. And, and you know what? When in our you know Villanova games and in our Providence game and either our North Carolina, we got away from them. And the details didn't make as much difference. In a 10-point game as we saw today, in like that, it can be tied up. So uh, we're going we're gonna to learn, and I, we got to continue to grow these guys one way or another. Through, through praise or penalty, we got to continue to grow. Patrick Chambers was really impressed with your three-point defense. They make a run, they get to within eight, and then you push right back. How impressed were you with your team's focus there down the stretch? Well, I'll give you a great example why we guard the three lines so much. I mean, we're up by 17, and they bank in a three, right? right? And all of a sudden it's 14. Then they get an old-fashioned three-point play, and now it's a, we miss one shot. They bank. We miss one shot. They go down, and now they get old-fashioned. And now it's an 11-point game. That's why it's so important not to allow people to have too many good looks from three. Jordan Poole continues to grow yeah. in so many different ways, not just offensively, because we immediately yeah, yeah. gravitate toward the offensive box score, but defensively as well. And talking with a lot of their coaches and, and their radio broadcasts, they can't believe how connected your team is defensively. Well, it, it's that? good to hear. I mean, uh, uh, that Xavier sets this stage.
stage for us. And then Charles is right there. What is underrated is the job Jordan Poole is doing right now. He was going to have to guard a shooter all day long, and he just did a great job, whether it was Reeves, whether it was number two Dread. I mean, those guys are great shooters. They're not good shooters. They're great shooters. They didn't get clean looks. So Jordan Poole right now continues to grow. I mean, the kid's 19 years old. He's a sophomore, and he's just getting better every single day. Ignis Prasdakis goes from freshman of the week, scoring 21, to getting his first double-double of his career. It seemed like he let the game come to him. Yeah. I mean, he is a forceful guy. Yeah. What did you like most well, about that's his That's what I liked. In the first half, right, um, he let the game come to him a little bit. He did not try and force him. He's starting to understand how to be a, 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 a smarter player against other good players, not just hooping and letting things happen. And so as a result, I think I loved his pace. He studied the game, and he still, he did less, and, and, and it was more. I didn't see him out there getting thirsty at all, like a lot of guys who score like he does. who get thirsty, and all of a sudden, got, I got next time the ball's a grenade in my hand, I got to make a play. He's playing with a pace right now that shows a high IQ for the game. I always find it interesting, your conversations with your freshmen, but you're constantly talking to everybody. Charles Matthews got in foul trouble, yeah. had just two points in the yeah. first half against Penn State, and then he erupts for a dozen yeah. in the second half. What did you say to him to settle him yeah. down and make him get back to where he usually is? Matt, I wasn't happy with him. We got Isaiah Livers out for the game, right? And all of a sudden, he's getting a foul trying to post somebody up, getting in a hand fight, 21 feet from the basket. You know, you can't, we don't care if you get a post up, a post up on the block is one thing, but that's, that's the type of thing he's got to grow from. And there's too many times, I love Charles and I wouldn't trade him for anybody, right? Too many times he's got this silly foul and then the ref will make another call that you can't help. And all of a sudden with Isaiah Livers out today, we did not need him to be sitting on the bench. And, and so as a result, um, he's growing every day and I can't wait to see what he does in these last 15 games of our season. Michigan ended the 2018 calendar year with a 74-52 win over Binghamton. They were led by Ignis Brasdakis. He had 21 points. Jordan Poole set a career high with six triples on the night and finished with 18. And Xavier Simpson had a career high 10 assists. With the win, the Wolverines finished 2018's calendar 34-5. And, and they're one of only four teams on the season to go undefeated at 13-0. How is it different going from non-conference back into the conference where teams know you so well? You have, you know, 14 games on video, and they're studying what you do. It's just volume, and now you, but you're going into conference where the athletes are a similar size, right? The coaches are terrific, right? There's a lot on the line. And now it is, it's a whole different level of IQ that you have to pick up. I remember when you guys were getting ready to play Purdue, the first Big Ten yeah. game of the year earlier this season, you said this is going to be a grind, Matt, because it's 20 games. Mm -hmm. This was a pretty good example of it. And then you get Indiana coming to your place later on today. Romeo Langford jumps out mm -hmm. at a lot of people. Yeah. Um, what impresses you most about the Hoosiers' early start? Well, I haven't wa I, I've watched enough tape on them to know that you know they're very good, and I've watched a couple of those games. Right, Langford is terrific. I, I think Archie's doing a tremendous job there. They've had a lot of injuries. Jawan Morgan has given people fits. He scores in a lot of different ways. I watched a little bit of their Butler game, and they got a terrific win there. So they, they really have a lot of different dimensions to their game, great quickness and length. Uh, we're going to have to shoot the ball well, and we're going to really have to defend. Both, both uh, the, uh, the big, the big felt Morgan is going to give us troubles the same, be very similar to what we saw with Stevens. Right, really good. And then Romeo's can really, really play. So we're going to have to find somebody who can stay in front of him and contest that beautiful jump shot. Coach, congratulations on being one of four teams in the country being undefeated. Thanks, Matt, very much. Time for our DTE performance of the week. Cool. Trying to lose Reeves. A crossover. Now a middle lane drop. Behind the back pass. Oh, and a man. jam for Davis. That was special. Just put that highlight reel together for Jordan Cool. After dropping their Big Ten opener to Nebraska on the road, the Wolverines return to Chrysler Center New Year's Eve to face 12th ranked and unbeaten Minnesota. Michigan used a 14 0 run over the final four minutes of the second quarter to take control of the game. 
Senior Hallie Thome and freshman guard Amy Dilk led Michigan in scoring with 14 points each, while sophomore Deja Church added 13 as the Wolverines handed the Gophers their first loss of the season, 76 to 60. Michigan was in West Lafayette Saturday night taking on Purdue. The Wolverines led early and had a one-point lead at the intermission. Dilk returned to her home state and poured in 16 points for the Wolverines, and Thoam dominated in the paint while scoring 16 of her own. Purdue's Dominique Odin put the home team up by a bucket with 23 seconds left to go, but the Wolverines had one shot. Four seconds. Brown's got it. Long two for the lead. No! Michigan drops a heartbreaker on the road, 71 to 70. The Wolverines return home to Chrysler Center on Tuesday to take on Northwestern before traveling to College Park, Maryland on Saturday to face off against the Terrapins. We'll have highlights of both games on next week's show. And as a reminder, you can always follow the Wolverines anytime on any of our social media sites and on mgoblue.com. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Anthony Palladano. All right, Anthony, thanks. When we come back, Mel Pearson takes his hockey team to play hockey outdoors against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Ed Kongerski has the story from South Bend next. Michigan's Leaders in Best is brought to you by Gardner White Furniture. Here's Ed Kongerski. Saturday at dusk, the Michigan hockey team played outdoors at one of our nation's most iconic sports venues, Notre Dame Stadium. We've had 100 teams here, 100 years, and, uh, you know, it's pretty special that I get to, uh, you know, play in one of them and, uh, you know, play for Michigan in an outdoor game against Notre Dame, you know, uh, just the history between those two programs in any sport in general. Let's play aggressive. First two guys, let's get after them. We talked about we're either going to be playing in our zone or their zone. Let's play in their zone. All the guys are super excited to play, um, finally after having skated on it. I mean, in the end, it is a conference game. It is three points, but I think we're going to have a ton of fun. The Wolverines weren't about to punt this opportunity. Captain Joe Saccone opened the scoring from about 170 feet away. The ice is bad and uh, all the lights and things like that. So once it went in, obviously I was shocked, but I knew uh, in these types of games, you're going to win on fluky goals, and, and that helped. That tally, part of a three-goal assault in the first 9.54. Then Will Lockwood follows it up 16 seconds later on a really uh, great individual effort, and uh, then Nolan Moyle, good shot, so um, it's a big win for our team. I I'm happy for our players. Uh, you know, we're not going to be satisfied with this, but I'm happy for them. And, you know, we needed the points. On social media, some fans said the all-white uniforms resembled stormtroopers. Comparing them to the ground force of the Galactic Empire, they'll take it. No, I don't really know much about Star Wars. I can see the resemblance. Um, yeah, I think we look a little bit better than those classic guys. The all-white unis were obviously pretty awesome, and um, I was afraid people weren't going to be able to see us out there, but it was awesome. The program's eighth outdoor game of the modern era resulted in a 4-2 win. Goalie Hayden Levine kicked aside 30 shots as Michigan picked up its first win of the new year. We did a great job of holding them to, to not many opportunities. We just kind of played our game, continued to forecheck, continued to try and make that lead even bigger, and worked out for us. I'll never forget this moment for the rest of my life. It was uh, truly one of the best experiences I've ever had, and I couldn't be happier to have done it with a better group. It was just unbelievable. Uh, the crowd, I mean, the practice yesterday was awesome. Today's game was just incredible. So it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience for me, and I'm glad we got the win. Growing up playing on the ponds back in Canada, I'm um, just trying to get to relive that in a real game against a big big stage like that it was phenomenal just the chills going out at the beginning and hearing everybody cheer and just the cold air as we were playing it was, it was unbelievable and I'll never forget that after struggling during the 2018 portion of their schedule this is the kind of game the Wolverines needed something to propel them into January it's worth three points in the standings and a lifetime of memories at Notre Dame Stadium I'm Ed Kingerski. Ed, thanks. Good stuff. Love those outdoor hockey games. I know some people get tired of them. I can't get enough of them. Great stuff from South Bend, Indiana. We invite you back next week for another edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. The Wolverines will take on the Indiana Hoosiers at Chrysler Center. We'll have a recap of that one and a recap of their second Big Ten road game of the year when they tangle the Fighting Illini in Champaign-Urbana. For Ed Kongerski and everybody here at Michigan, thanks for joining us, and go Blue.